Tonight, Smile, the FBI's new face recognition system, is go. The U.S. government's demand for user data is growing. And it's official, Microsoft is buying Minecraft for billions. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 172 for Monday, September 15th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great tasting healthy snacks right to your door. Forget the vending machine and start snacking smarter with healthy delicious treats like cinnamon swirl kettle kernels. I decimated a bag of those earlier. To get your free NatureBox sampler, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's free NatureBox snacks at naturebox.com slash twit. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah Lane and let's get right into today's tech feed. After over three years in development, the FBI has announced that its Next Generation Identification System, or NGI, is now fully operational. The Bureau will be rolling out new features for ongoing criminal notifications, as well as facial recognition feature called the Interstate Photo System, or IPS, kind of controversial, which will serve as quote, an image searching capability of photographs associated with criminal identities. That's according to the FBI's press release. The system is expected to collect as many as 52 million faces in total, though some in the industry have called out the IPS as ineffective for mixing mugshot photos with non-criminal faces that are pulled from employment records and background check databases. For any given face, NGI returns a list of about 50 candidates and only promises an 85% chance that the suspect will be on that list. All that said, law enforcement groups across the U.S. will begin working with this system soon better for worse. Today, Google published its 10th transparency report covering government requests for user data. And guess what? The government's been busy. According to the company, worldwide data requests not related to FISA, that's the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or NSL, which is the National Security Letters, there's been a 15% increase in requests compared to the same time last year. And since 2009, the increase has grown 150%. Google notes that U.S.-specific requests have grown 19% since last year and 250% since 2009. Google believes that the USA Freedom Act, which is currently awaiting a vote in Congress, will curb the mass collection of data, help curb it anyway, because it would prevent the bulk collection of user metadata and allow Google to be more transparent about requests for user information. The Federal Communications Commission, FCC, has released an updated count of how many comments it's received on net neutrality and there have been quite a few. The public has filed 3 million comments on the matter, says the FCC, which is more than double the last official count of 1.48 million. This is also an FCC comment record. You know who they upset? The previous champion, Janet Jackson, for that infamous Super Bowl wardrobe malfunction some years back. The FCC is closing the net neutrality docket and will stop accepting further comments later tonight. So hurry, if you still want to be heard, you have very little time left. And maybe no time at all if you're watching this after the fact. People want bigger iPhones. That is clear. Apple announced today that early orders for the new 4.7-inch iPhone 6 and the 5.5-inch iPhone 6 Plus topped 4 million in the first 24 hours that they became available for order online over the weekend, which is double the number of early orders that came in for the iPhone 5 when it went on sale online two years ago. The new phones arrive in stores on Friday, if you're lucky enough to be able to pre-order in time. Apple's financial earnings lean heavily on sales of the iPhone, which accounts for about 70% of Apple's profit. Though with the new Apple Watch, some, I don't know, these numbers might change a bit. Microsoft confirmed today that its rumored Windows event will indeed take place on September 30th in San Francisco. The event is expected to include a release of the technical preview of Windows 9, codenamed Threshold, and the successor to Windows 8 OS that was released back in 2012, along with the Surface line of tablets. Microsoft isn't expected to release a preview of its updated version of Windows RT that may include Windows Phone components until early 2015, but we'll know more in about 15 days. Coming up, what do 200,000 an iPhone 6s look like when they're stuffed into the cargo hold of a 747? <laughs> the answer may surprise you. And up next, I'll talk with Josh Ong from the Next Web about what we might expect from Minecraft once it's owned by Microsoft. But first, drop the candy bar. Drop it. Drop the candy bar. 
Drop the potato chips. I know they taste good, but they're really not good for you. You want to snack better. Delicious snacks are at naturebox.com that are tasty and good for you. Free snacks with a sampler box, in fact, featuring five of their most popular snacks is something that we here at Twit think that you would really need. Nature Box has hundreds of delicious snacks. You don't have to feel guilty about eating them because they're good for you. They taste good, but they're good for you. They have zero artificial ingredients, no trans fats. Those are terrible fats you do not want to be eating. Zero high fructose corn syrup. You'll even find snacks that are low in sugar, gluten-free snacks. Whatever your dietary needs, Nature Box has you covered. You can grab peanut butter nom noms from Nature Box, baked sweet potato fries, blueberry almond bites. They are so good, and they're so good for you. It's pretty much the best thing that happened to the pantry here at Twit. <laughs> Start your free trial and get a free sampler box right now at naturebox.com slash twit. You work in an office with a bunch of people who eat like garbage? This is what they need. Naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong. Start snacking smarter with Naturebox. And thanks to Naturebox for their support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us now is Josh Ong, U.S. editor over at The Next Web. Josh, you want to talk about Minecraft? Sure, let's do it. All right, so Microsoft bought Minecraft. It was rumored last week. Uh, it's official for $2.5 billion. Now, one might say, oh, that's a lot of money for sort of a, for a you know, a gaming company that a lot of people equate with you know, sort of the younger set. A lot of kids play Minecraft, but it's one of the most popular games of all time. Makes a lot of money, $360 million in profit last year. Do you think that this is a really good buy for Microsoft, or what do you make of the partnership? I think it's a win for Microsoft. It's certainly a lot of money to pay, so um, that needs to be taken into consideration in terms of whether they can keep the community going in order to recoup that investment. But but I think for Microsoft, it's it's all, it's about the money, but it's less about the the money, money, and more about gaining access to this massive community of gamers and many of them quite young, and being able to kind of walk with them toward some of their other products. You mentioned, um, you mentioned a lot of the user base is quite young. The creator of, of, of the company behind uh, Minecraft, Marcus Person, also known as Notch, is going to leave the company. And he's been really vocal in the past about not really wanting to be part of a larger company machine and how things go wrong. Uh, the company famously has a has a very small number of employees considering uh, the, the reach of Minecraft. But for that younger set of users, does anyone care that Microsoft is a parent company. Is that the sort of thing that trickles down into the, the way that people feel who are playing Minecraft? It's it's going to go both ways. I think um, Minecraft has historically had this kind of indie, um, you know, DIY feel to it where, where people just um, didn't feel like they were playing this corporate game, um, something that has this huge marketing machine and, and you know, is, is trying to wring all the money out of it. So I, I think Microsoft is, you know, as a corporation, doesn't necessarily have that kind of indie cred, um, and that's going to be an issue for some people. But, but I, I think for the, the kids at home, you know, uh, or at school, like I, I don't think it'll be a huge deal for them as long as they can still play Minecraft where they want to play it, when they want to play it. So. Yeah, I guess that would be one of the, the the major questions that some people would have is, oh, well, if Microsoft owns Minecraft. Will it still be able to be played on multiple platforms? You know, is this something that's going to be Xbox only? I think Microsoft would ever do something like that. Well, it, I think it'd be a stupid move because um, it would just tear apart the community. So, right. so on one hand, I think they need to have the, even if it's just shrewd business sense, not to come in and just destroy half of half of the um, you know half of the game. Um, but, you know, when I look at their statements, um, both Microsoft and, and Mojang's um, statements, they're not very ironclad in promising the community that, that they're really going to keep the development. What Microsoft says is that they plan to continue. And mm -hmm. Mojang says that uh, there's no reason for the development, sales and support of the uh, different versions to stop. But the fact that there's no reason, that doesn't really say that Microsoft's guaranteeing that, say, the, the PlayStation version is protected, you know? And Microsoft says it plans to, but it could always change those plans if it decides that, um, you know, a, a Minecraft exclusivity for the Xbox and Windows would really 
benefit it. So I'm going to bet that it's going to stay cross-platform um, simply because I think it would generate way too much um, bad publicity and, and, you know, just bad gamer feelings um, if, if they really did cut some people off. This, this game is an obsession for a lot of people and for a lot of kids, and it's really an amazing community in terms of what people are building. Um, you know, a few weeks ago, someone went viral with a working hard drive within the game and it, you, you know, it flips the switches and is able to store stuff. And, and that just really goes to show like what, what people can build with this, how much time they've spent, how, how much of a lifestyle it's become for some of these players. So, well, you mentioned earlier in this interview, 2.5 billion is nothing to sneeze at. That's a lot of money. But at the same time, you're kind of describing that the Minecraft community for many people, it is an obsession and, if you get obsessed at a young age, you might be playing Minecraft for decades to come. What 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 do you think about that 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 dollar amount? Do you think do you think it, it almost makes another company look like they missed an opportunity? Well, I think if you look at Minecraft as a game, it it looks like Microsoft is overpaying. But I think if you view it as a platform, if you view it as an opportunity to connect with um you know, a massive community of highly engaged fans. It's a different story. The truth is that Mojang hasn't been aggressive about monetizing Minecraft up till now. So even the profit that they're making now could be pushed even farther if, um, you know, if Microsoft was willing to really tighten up. You know, back in June, there was kind of an issue over um, the EULA um, that, that Mojang had some pretty strict rules about what you can monetize for the game. They really don't want people to turn it into a pay-to-play or pay-to-win, excuse me, um, type of situation. And and so I think they've been very uh, maybe gamer-friendly with their rules to protect um, really toxic situations, taking advantage of kids who who have to kind of dump all this money, uh, their parents' money, you know, into playing this game. And, you know, I hope that Microsoft continues that that value. Um, but I think you can expect to see them sit down with the game and think about how to really monetize it in a better way to, to get back their money. So, yeah, And as you we'll mentioned, see. the EULA or end user license agreement, as a Minecraft user, you definitely want to be able to make sure that you're reading those really carefully uh, when they're updated uh, under the Microsoft umbrella. Josh Ong is a U.S. editor over at The Next Web and a frequent uh, visitor to Tech News Tonight. Thanks for being with us, Josh, and let folks know where they can keep up with your work. Sure. Yeah, visit us at thenextweb.com. And I'm on Twitter most of the time at uh, Beijing D-O-U or Do. And uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. See you soon. Great. All right, moving on. Were you one of those first four million or so iPhone buyers who got through online to pre-order? If so, there's a pretty decent chance that your new iPhone, specifically yours, is in this photo where it just flew across the Pacific Ocean from China to the U.S., Alaska specifically. The images come from a forum user over at Mac Rumors named go for black Sky, who recently landed in Anchorage, Alaska with his 747 full of iPhones. 200,000 of them, in fact. The cargo weighed in at about 256,000 pounds, which put him and his plane just under the maximum landing weight of 643,000 pounds. And according to his estimations, about 20 to 30 of these airplanes are coming out of China stuffed with iPhones just like this one every day. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Praise, we love praise, but criticism is fine as well. And don't miss Tech News today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.